Crossroads kids, Pastor Patty here. Welcome to our brand new YouTube channel. Now, I am super bummed that we don't get the chance to meet face to face together this Sunday at Crossroads Church. However, how cool is it that we get to share Jesus and talk about God's love on YouTube? So in a couple of weeks, we will come back together on our church campus, but until then, we are going to do church online through YouTube. Now, I have a question for you. How many of you have ever been afraid of something? I know I have. In fact, when I was a kid, I was afraid of all kinds of things. I mean, I had a super amount of fears. And some of my fears, they were kind of silly and didn't really make any sense. And then some of my fears were very real and kind of strong. Now, I remember one of my silly fears. I had a fear of elevators. Now, I was afraid that when you would go into an elevator and the doors would close, that the world outside of those doors would just disappear simply because I couldn't see them. I know, silly, right? I mean, I wasn't afraid of getting stuck in the elevator. I wasn't afraid of it stopping. I was afraid that the world would disappear just because I couldn't see it. How silly is that? Now, I also remember that I was super afraid of thunderstorms. Did any of you guys hear that super cool thunder that we had just this week? I mean, I loved it. Now, I didn't always love thunderstorms. In fact, when I was a kid, the minute I saw lightning or I heard thunder, I would start to just shake and shake and shake very uncontrollably and almost like I couldn't keep myself from doing it. That's how afraid of thunder I was. Now, I remember this one time. When I was a kid, I shared a room with my sister and our room was a disaster. It was just a complete mess. I mean, I'm talking about shoes everywhere and toys everywhere, clothes everywhere. In fact, just to get from the door of my room to my bed, we had to like clear a pathway so that we wouldn't step on something or trip over something. And one night we just stuck a bunch of our toys to kind of clear that path into my very teeny tiny closet. And then my dad, he tucked my sister and I in and he said our prayers and he turned off the light and he left my room to say goodnight. Instantly, as soon as the light was off, I looked at my closet and I noticed that there was something that was glowing inside of my closet. It was making my closet glow this weird kind of green glow and I started freaking out. I mean, my closet was tiny. It didn't have a door on it. There certainly wasn't a light in there, so it couldn't have been that. And I started wondering, what is that glow? What is making my closet glow this green color? And so of course, because I was a kid, I called out for my dad, dad, come help me. And so my dad came into my room and when he walked in, he saw the glowing closet also, but my dad was braver than I was. And so he walked to the closet and started taking things out. He did it in the dark with the glow still on. He started removing things and removing toys and he found something in there that was causing the glow. You see, back in those days, I had a toy called a glow worm. Now, a glowworm was this cute little worm type stuffed animal. It was meant to be like a nightlight and stuffed animal all in one. See, it had a very uh, worm or caterpillar type soft, squishy body that you could squeeze and hold while you were sleeping. And then its face, when you squeezed its body, would glow. And that was what was inside of my closet. All of the toys that we had thrown in there were squishing my glow worm and causing it to glow. And that's what was lighting up my closet because my glow worm was a green glow worm into a green light. Whew. Nothing to be afraid of after all. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever been afraid of something? In fact, I know it's gonna sound a little silly, but I want you to tell me out loud right now on the count of three, what you've been afraid of. It could be something silly, or it could be something a little more serious and strong. I know it seems silly, but are you ready? Okay, shout it out to me on one, two, three. <laughs> now, some of the things that you guys may have said may have been a little on the silly side, like maybe you're afraid of the dark or maybe you don't like to go upstairs by yourself. 
or maybe you're afraid to fly or you're afraid of heights. Maybe some of the things that you said were a little bit more strong or they felt a little bit of a deeper fear. Like maybe you said that you're afraid because your parents are going through a divorce. Or maybe you said that you're afraid to stand up in front of people and talk. Maybe you said you're afraid of the coronavirus. Or maybe you're afraid of the unknown. You don't like not knowing what's gonna happen. In fact, you don't even like surprises, whether or not they're good. You wanna know what's gonna happen next. Now, these fears that I just mentioned, they are real and they can cause us some stress and some anxiety. I mean, if your parents are going through a divorce, that is a scary time. And if you're afraid to stand up in front of people and talk and your name gets called at school or you have to give a presentation, then maybe your hands might start to feel sweaty and tingly and your heart might beat really fast. And maybe even this coronavirus is making you afraid because you're asking yourself, what's gonna happen next? And the fact is, is that's unknown and that can cause worry and fear. But did you know that the Bible actually talks about fear? Quite a bit, actually. I mean, God knew that we were human and being fearful of things actually is a part of being human. And so God talks about fear quite a lot. If you have your Bible with you, I want you to open up to Psalm 94, 19. But if you don't have your Bible, that's okay because the verse will show up on the screen and you can read it with me together. Psalm 94, 19 says, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. What the writer of the Psalm is basically saying is, when I felt super afraid and worried, your comfort, God, brought me joy. Did you know that it is possible to have comfort and joy even when you're afraid? It is possible if you come to God because He can give you that comfort. In fact, whenever you're afraid, He wants you to just talk to Him about it. If you are afraid of this coronavirus because maybe you heard something that your teacher said or a fellow student or you happened to hear something on the news or the radio, maybe you're even afraid because of something you heard your family family say, I encourage you, talk to God about your fears. He wants you to talk to him so that he can bring you comfort and peace in the middle of that. Let's look at something else in the Bible that talks about fear. Jesus said this in Matthew 6:34. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Jesus said these words. And in reality, he's telling us these words because, well, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Tomorrow's gonna worry about itself. Jesus is telling us that we shouldn't worry about what tomorrow will bring because we actually don't know what tomorrow will bring. Think of it like this. Maybe last week when it was super sunny and the weather was awesome, maybe you said to your friend, you know what, let's go to the beach next Saturday. It's been super great, the weather's been awesome, we're gonna have a really great time. And so you set together a plan. You talk about who's bringing what, what car you'll ride in, which beach you're gonna go to, you make all the plans, well then, you know what happened to the weather this week, right? Yeah, it's been rainy and it's been kind of crazy and it's been cold. Not good beach weather at all. The fact of the matter is that God actually tells us to make plans even though we don't know our future. He wants us to work hard. He wants us to strive to do our best and to make plans for things like school and work and vacation and cleaning our house and having people come over. He wants us to live our life like that even though we don't know what could happen tomorrow. Now, the fact that we don't know what could happen tomorrow, that can feel scary, but it's actually not a reason to be afraid because even though we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, God knows what's going to happen. In fact, God has a master plan. Nothing surprises him, nothing shocks him, nothing catches God off guard. Jesus tells us not to worry about tomorrow because Jesus already knows what tomorrow is going to bring. And if we have faith in him, if we put our trust in Jesus, then we can be calm. We cannot worry about tomorrow 
because we recognize that God knows what tomorrow will bring. In fact, he knew that the coronavirus would be here. He knew that we wouldn't be meeting at church in person right now, but God has a plan and we can take comfort in knowing that he knows the future. Let's look at something else that Jesus said. In John chapter 14, he says this, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus was actually telling this to his friends, his disciples. He knew that they were going to, in the future, go through a really hard time. And he was telling them that with God, there is peace. With God, there is a sense of calm. You can have peace and you can be calm in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind, even through seasons that seem a little bit crazy. It's sort of like this. Take this backpack, for example. Isn't this a super cool backpack? It's a superhero one. It has on the front, we got Team Captain America. On the back, we have Iron Man, who's my personal favorite. But let's think about it like this. When we have our backpack and it's empty, it feels light, right? Well, let's imagine that this backpack is like our life. When it, we are light and carefree, burden-free, we're not weighed down by worries and fears, you know, it feels light. We can be excited and it's easy to have joy. But then, when we start to add things into our lives, things that we're worried about or afraid of, for example, maybe you have something like going on in your family that you're concerned about. And so, oh, that's pretty heavy, let me tell you. Or maybe you're, you're worried about things at school. You've got tests, you have homework, there's a lot going on and, and you know, you just kind of stuff that in your backpack. Ooh, it's starting to get heavy, right? Maybe you're dealing with some unkind kids at school and, and that's really hard to, to deal with and we're just stuffing that in there. And maybe you're even afraid of the coronavirus. And so, uh, let's get that in there. Maybe turn it to the other side, make a little more room for my worries and my fears. And you know, then we have fears of the unknown, things that we don't know are coming up and whew, that goes in there, which then causes us some stress, holy moly. And then that causes us some worry. And before we know it, our backpack of life is so heavy and so full. And then we try to put it on and we try to walk around with it and it's so heavy that we're barely carrying our burden of stress. But then when we decide to give these fears to God, you see 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us that God cares about us and he wants us to give him our fears. So I then say, God, I give you my worries. God, I give you my stress. God, I give you my fear of the unknown. I give you my fear of this coronavirus. I give you my fear of unkind kids at school that I'm dealing with. I give you all these fears. I just take them out of my backpack of life and I lay them down at your feet because you care for me. And so now I've given all of those things to God and his peace can now fill this backpack. And that's not a heavy burden. In fact, it's very light. God wants you to talk to him in prayer about your fears that you are dealing with so that he can bring you his peace that can only come through knowing him and knowing his truth. I wanna give you three steps today that you can follow to help you when you're feeling afraid. Number one, trust Jesus. I know that may seem kind of simple, but trust Jesus. In fact, I want you to say out loud, Jesus, I trust you. Everybody, close your eyes right now. Just close them. Don't worry about anything. Close your eyes. And I want you to say out loud, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Now you can open your eyes again, but anytime you start to feel afraid or you hear something that makes you nervous or you start to get worried, say out loud, Jesus, I trust you. And if you really, really mean it, 
you will feel a sense of calm that comes from trusting Jesus. Number two, read God's word. Read the Bible. Reading the Bible and being in God's word can help you to remember that God is in control. In fact, if you want, just take the four verses that I shared with you today and look them up on your Bible app or in an actual physical Bible and highlight them. If you need help from your parents, even better because then you're reading the Bible together as a family. But like I said, knowing God's word and reading it can really help to calm your fears because it reminds us that God knows what he's doing. Number three, share. Share this message with others. As kids, you might feel like, well, what can I do that's important for God's kingdom? Well, you actually have way more influence than you think. You might have influence over an adult or a teacher or your brother or your sister or a friend. If you want to take this message, this video, these things that you've learned and share them with them, when maybe your family starts to feel anxious or worried or your friend starts to feel anxious or worried, you can share with them what you learned here. Guess what? YouTube is pretty cool too because you can share it with people all over. Your friends that don't even go to your school or your family that might live in another state. By liking and sharing and subscribing to our channel, you can help share the message that you learned today about how to punch fear in the face, right? That's really cool. Let's punch fear in the face today. Now, I'm going to also give you some practical things that you can do today too. Number one, wash your hands. Now, I know you know, I know you get told this all the time, but I've seen some of you come to Crossroads Kids Ministries with some pretty uh, grimy hands there. So we need to really be extra on this. We need to make sure that we are washing our hands way more than we typically do. That we are scrubbing in between our fingers, that we are making sure that we're using soap and warm water, maybe even saying happy birthday while you're washing your hands to make sure you get all those journeys off. But make sure that you are doing that. It'll help keep you healthy and your family healthy as well. Number two, eat healthy foods and take your vitamins. Now I know we all love those sugary treats and we all love the Takis with lime and the hot Cheetos with lime. I love those things. But those kinds of foods like those chips and, and the sugary treats, they're just not good for our bodies and they don't help our bodies to be strong. We wanna eat foods that will help our bodies to stay strong at this time, like vegetables and fruits. It may not seem as fun, but trust me, it's better for you in the long run. And number three, of course, pray. Pray. Pray to God about your fears and what you're worried about. Tell him all the things. Ask him to give your family wisdom. Ask him to protect your family. Ask God to give your school wisdom and our leaders wisdom and our church wisdom. Ask God to lead us during this time. Remember, he knows all of this. None of it is surprising to him so we can have faith and trust in him and give our fears to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that in this kind of weird time that just seems a little uncertain, that we actually have the opportunity to have church on YouTube. I thank you for these kids and these families that want to grow closer to you at this time. God, we pray for your protection we pray for your wisdom, and we pray for your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, make sure you tune in next week. We have a special At The Movies adventure that we're going to do. You won't be able to tune in on YouTube, but you will be able to watch it live during our nine o'clock service, 11 o'clock service on Sunday, and our 6.30 service on Wednesday night with your families. And it's gonna be awesome and you're not going to want to miss it. But after that, join me on YouTube each week. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and share this with all of your friends.